Hey guys, happy Wednesday. Hope everybody is doing well out there today. Uh, recently, I got a comment uh, from Sufian Abdullah, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, asking me how to install a link shortening service in Docker. So that's what we're gonna take care of today. We're gonna take a look at an application called Polar. I believe it's Polar, it's P-O-L-R. I'm gonna call it Polar. Um, so anyway, what I need to preface this with is there are some prerequisites to this video if you're gonna follow along. First things first, this only works on x86 processors. This will not work on a Raspberry Pi. Um, I may do another video later with uh, something that is Pi compatible, but for right now, uh, we're just gonna do this on a desktop processor uh, setup. So just know that's where we are with that. Also, in order for this to work and be, uh, I mean, usable on the internet, you're going to need to have a domain name uh, with a reverse proxy set up on your server already uh, so that you can actually access this domain name from outside your network. Uh, otherwise, it, it, it just won't work. It may work internally, but not uh, out in the wild if you wanted to send somebody a short link to your server to uh, access something else. So uh, just know that you will need uh, a, a domain name and a reverse proxy set up to access this uh, remotely. So with that being said, let's jump over to my desktop and take a look. Uh, what we're gonna do, uh, we are on uh, docker-polar over on GitHub from, um, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that, A-J-A-N-B-I-E-R. Um, they have made this uh, this port. Uh, I looked at, at Polar, uh, it wasn't real intuitive, so I did some more research, found this, it works. So this is what we're gonna go with. Um, and it's actually pretty easy to set up, but I will say that most of this is going to happen in command line. So uh, don't let that scare you, it's really not as bad as it sounds. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do here before we actually get into that is talk about the domain name settings, uh, just because sometimes this can take a little while to propagate. Uh, I'm doing everything through Cloudflare, uh, so if you wanna follow along with Cloudflare, uh, this is what you'll wanna do first uh, to make sure everything is working. Um, so I've got my, my URL that I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use dbtech.link, uh, you can actually get a dot link or a dot click uh, URL from Porkbun for 99 cents right now. I will have a link uh, with an affiliate code down there where you can pick one of these up. I don't make any money, uh, but you can get a domain name for 99 cents. So, um, so just know that that's this is the domain I'm using. I pointed it to Cloudflare. Uh, I've got videos that you can check out if you want to know how to do that. If you haven't already. Uh, what we want to do though is come over here where it says uh, stat or proxy status is proxied. We actually want to make sure that that is set to DNS only right there. So uh, go ahead and click on save so that it is DNS only. And then we can move on to the rest of our video here. So uh, what we want to do is uh, come over to uh, our SSH program, get logged in like so. And what I want to do is just see where I am um, so I've got a bunch of folders in here from other stuff that I've done. Uh, what I want to do is uh, actually make a directory uh, called Polar. Um, so I'm logged in as root. If not, you may have to do a sudo there. Um, but I'm logged in as root, so I don't need to. Uh, so next thing I want to do is go over and cd, change directory, into Polar. Now once I'm there, uh, what I can do is come over here and grab this URL under code, under HTTPS. I'm just going to copy that like so, and I'm gonna come back over here. So next thing I'm gonna type in is git uh, clone, and I'm gonna paste in that URL. Now, if you don't have git installed, uh, it's actually, it's very easy to install. Uh, all you've gotta do is just type in uh, probably sudo apt install git, like so. Um, I don't need to do that because it's already done, but that's the process to install git uh, if you need to do that. So now that we've got that done, we can say uh, git uh, clone, uh, and I'll paste that in. And uh, I'll do that. Just that quick, it downloaded all the files. Not a lot in there, Don't need. doesn't need to be. So what I can do now is do an ls. We can see that it says docker-polar. I'm actually gonna clean this up. I'll do ls there. So docker-polar, that's another directory. So we're gonna cd uh, into, oops, docker. So I'm gonna cd into that and I'm gonna do ls. Now, <clears throat> if we take a look, oops, at the, the files and folders that are available in here, uh, one thing that you may notice is that this .env.example isn't available. We can't see it um, because for whatever reason, uh, it's a dot or well, for whatever reason, this SSH program doesn't recognize dot .files. So what we need to do is actually uh, move that file. Uh, we're gonna rename it, but, but to do that, we'll, we'll move it. So we're gonna say mv um, .env .example. And then we're just gonna type uh, space .env. So that's going to basically rename that file from e .env .example to just .env. Uh, and the reason we need to do that, maybe I should explain that first, is because if we come over here, 
um, right here, our ENV file is right there. Uh, and that's what it's looking for. I guess you could change that to make it dot example at the end of that, but we'll just do it the easy way. So, so we've got that, uh, we've gone ahead and renamed that file. So then what we can do um, is nano uh, dot ENV. And right here is our, uh, basically all of our environmental variables that we need to address and take a look at to make sure everything is going to work uh, the way we want it to and make sure that everything is set up the way we want it to be. So. Um, basically all of this database stuff you can leave. I mean, you should probably change the passwords uh, if you wanna do that, that's fine. Uh, change those to whatever you'd like those to be. The email address, uh, we'll change that uh, like so.com. Um, our app name, that can be whatever you want. That's what's gonna show up in the header uh, for the application name. Uh, I'm gonna call this uh, DB uh, uh, tech, like so. Um, the app protocol, because we're gonna access this remotely, we want this to be secure. Uh, we're gonna change that to 8,000. And, okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna change this app address. Um, and we're gonna call this uh, dbtech dot, uh, did I do, uh, dot link, like so. Account creation, uh, you can turn this on or off if you want to. Uh, if you if you leave it off, there will only be the admin account. Uh, if you turn it on, uh, people will uh, other people will be able to create accounts on your server, and that's kind of a security risk. So uh, change that at your own uh, your own precautionary measures. There, uh, just make sure that you know the risks going into making account uh, creation available. So if you do that, you'll definitely want to. If you if you turn out account creation on, you want account activation on. Uh, you'll probably want recap on, which means you'll need to get reCAPTCHA keys. Um, and the setting for pub public interface, I make that false. Uh, I want people to have to, if they if they get to the dashboard somehow, I want them to have to log in in order to see anything. Uh, so public interface is false. Uh, let's scroll down some more. A lot of this we don't necessarily need to deal with. Um, uh, this uh, Some of this is for signups. Uh, so if you wanna say nobody with a Yahoo email address can sign up, uh, you can put in, you can restrict email domains. So you can, you can just lock it down to, like if I wanted, I could just set up so that only people with dbtechreview.com's uh, e or, uh, domain name, email addresses could sign up. I'm not gonna worry about that since I've got it set to be uh, a private instance anyway. Um, and then if you wanted to get notifications for account creation, password resets, things like that, uh, you can fill in all of this mail stuff uh, like you see here. But I believe that should be uh, everything that we need to do there. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and say Control O, Enter, and then Control X to get out of there. Uh, the other thing I wanna do here is actually do a nano of the Docker Compose file, because there's some stuff in here that we need to change. Uh, like this, I actually ran into an issue where it's at 3.7. Change it to 3.3, it works fine. Uh, ports, uh, we're gonna change this um, to something other than 8080. Oops, except some of that needs to be 8080. I'm gonna do uh, like that, and then I'll do 8080, uh, because it's gonna be 8080 on the internal port. Uh, we're going to use Nginx Proxy Manager to point to 9876 there. I'm gonna change that, that's to, there, 9987, okay. So that's the port we're going to point uh, Nginx Proxy Manager to uh, when we get to that point. Uh, other than that, all of this can pretty much stay the same. So we'll say Control O and Enter and Control X, and then we can just say Docker Compose up minus D. So it's gonna go ahead and do this. Now, I've already downloaded all the files, been doing some testing to make sure this is all gonna work. Uh, yours will take a little longer to download the database and everything else. Uh, so once we've got that, uh, we can come over here and we can say, um, I will say Bruce Banner 9000, that's how we're gonna access there. Oops, we'll get logged in, we'll come over to here. Uh, we'll go to containers and uh, Polar and Maria database are both right there. Our database is, uh, is running, it's doing its thing. It's good, we'll take a look at the logs here. Uh, this looks like it's probably good. Let's take a look and, uh, and make sure. Uh, it says it's running healthfully. So we're gonna say, oops, admin and password. And there we go. Now, if you wanted to, I actually should have, I should have talked about that a little bit first. Now that I think about it, let's do, uh, oops. Um. Your username and password right here, I didn't even touch on those, I should have. That's how you're gonna change your username and password to get uh, logged into the admin panel. So now that we have this, we can see that here's our IP address on our internal, uh, you know, we could uh, create, um, if I were to type in uh, HTTPS 
ebtechreviews.com, oops, com. And then do, uh, we can do link options. Uh, we can we can create our own little extension there. So I could call it dbtech and I can click shorten. And right there is the shortened URL. That's great. The problem is we can't access that from the internet. So let's do that next. So what I'll do is I'll come over here and I'll say, I'm gonna go to uh, where I've got my uh, Nginx proxy manager. That's not what I wanted at all. Uh, 82, there we go. I get logged in. Okay, so I've got my, my three hosts in here. Uh, what I wanna do is add a new proxy host. Uh, my domain name is going to be dbtech.link. Uh, uh, scheme, I'm gonna leave as HTTP, it's fine. 192.168.68.25.0. Oops, 68.250. And I did 9987, I believe. Let me verify that. 9987, that looks good. Uh, I'm gonna block common exploits. The SSL, I'm gonna pull a new one. I'm gonna force SSL and HTTP, I'm going to agree, and I'll click save. And then we're gonna give this a minute to do what it needs to do. Uh, right now it's gonna pull it, uh, an SSL and get it set up. Um, and then once we're done with that, we've gotta do a couple more changes and we should be good to go. Okay, so right here we've got dbtech.link pointing to that IP, that looks good. Uh, what we wanna do here is click on edit, uh, click on SSL and reforce those, click save. Now, once we've got that, we've got our SSL set up, we can see that it's uh, being provided by Let's Encrypt, so that's good. What we wanna do is now come back over to here, uh, click DNS, change that uh, back to proxy, and click save. Um, and then, now for the next 15 to 20 minutes or so, uh, it could start throwing an error when we log in, uh, saying that the site isn't secured uh, because uh, in the back end, uh, Cloudflare is still uh, propagating the DNS change uh, to go from uh, not proxied to proxied. So you may end up with some error messages in here, just know they should go away. So what I wanna do now uh, is uh, come over to here. I'm gonna click on dbtech.link. There is my login screen. I'm gonna type in admin, password. Oops, let's try that again. There we go. So I didn't get any error messages, that's good. Um, so dbtech.link is up and running. Uh, this is on uh, on my server here in my living room. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna type in HTTP, actually, what I'm gonna do first, I wanna go to settings. Uh, you can change your password in here. Links, uh, here you can see that we already did one of these. Um, and so that that works. In fact, if I do, if I do a tab and I say uh, dbtech.link slash dbtech, I think, I think that's what I did, yeah and I click go, it automatically forwarded that over uh, to my website, so that's working. And then if I refresh, there we've got one click. Uh, so we can, we can actually keep track of the clicks on that URL. So if I go to home, um, nothing on the, the home link there. Links, we've got settings, again, passwords. And then here, uh, we've got more options as far as uh, users. Uh, we can see what's going on here. We can create new users. Uh, we can uh, delete users, change their permissions, that sort of thing. We can also disable links. Um, so if I were to go back, oops, and do like uh, dbtech.link slash dbtech. Oops, yeah, oops, I, I didn't spell it right. But uh, anyway, it says this link has been disabled by the administrator. Uh, so you do have control over that. Uh, we can re-enable that or we can delete it. Um, let's go back uh, to the home page here. Here's our, our link shortening uh, thing here. So I'm gonna say, uh, let's do, oops, let's do YouTube like that. Oh gosh, where, 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 where? There we go, I'm gonna type that in. Now, like I said, we can use link options and we can customize our own extension there, or we can just click shorten. Um, and it's just gonna throw the next available digit on the end of that. So if I copy that and click go, oops. Oh, cause I screwed that up. I, settings, links. Yeah, so I screwed that up, but actually let me go back uh, into here. We're gonna take a look at our polar here. We're gonna duplicate and edit. I think maybe I fat fingered something, environmental variables. I did, HTTP, that should be a P in there, like so. So if you fat finger something, you can go in and fix it in um, in Portainer. Uh, you can also come back in and you can change some of these. Now I wouldn't advise changing uh, your database usernames and passwords uh, once you've already launched this. I don't think that's a good idea at all, um, but, but you can go in and change some of this other stuff. Uh, in fact, uh, there are, 
a ton of environmental variables down here on this GitHub page that will uh, allow you to modify the, the instance to fit your needs uh, however you need them to work. There's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, like I really like the setting advanced analytics. Uh, we can probably we can just go ahead and turn that on. So I come back over here to Portainer um, and then come up to here and click add an environmental variable and scroll all the way down. We can go here and we just type in true and we'll scroll up and we'll click on deploy the container and click replace. And we'll give that a minute to deploy. Now, I don't know if this will actually retro any of the advanced analytics. Um, so just keep in mind, if you if you don't have that turned on and then you do, uh, you may only get uh, good data moving or additional data moving uh, forward from that point in time. Uh, so just something to be aware of there. Um, let's, let's refresh this. Oops. Because I changed that. It logged us out, so we'll log back in. There we go. I'm gonna say no. Um, I do want to come in here and go to settings. Let's look at our links. Oh, hey, look. Yeah, there, there are some additional uh, data points. I would definitely encourage you to turn advanced analytics on uh, because you, sh you should get some good data here uh, as far as where links are coming from or where clicks are coming from, that sort of thing. Let's take a look here and see what this says. Um, yeah, because the advanced analytics wasn't on at that point. So uh, let's let's click it again and see uh, see what happens here. There we go. So uh, it showed us that somebody clicked it. It showed us when, on what days. We're getting data here. Uh, I don't know what we'll need to do in order to get um, uh, the uh, the geographical data to show up. Got so many of those open. Uh, yeah, so I don't know how we get that turned on. It's probably a setting in there, but that is the gist of how to get uh, Polar installed for your own link shortening service. Uh, pretty straightforward. Again, it was mostly done in command line, but there are some things that you can edit uh, in Portainer and add additional custom fields for environmental variables, that sort of thing. Uh, so you really can customize this to be how you want it to be. So I encourage you to jump in there, tinker with it, try things out. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Also, again, don't forget, you can get a, a dot .click or a dot .link domain over at Porkbun for 99 cents through the end of 2020. So we've still got a couple of weeks for 99 cent domains. Uh, after that, they review for like five bucks or something. Uh, so, so great value as far as that's concerned. Um, so I, I want to give a big shout out to Porkbun for making uh, the, the coupon code available for my users. Big shout out to them. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, also, uh, while you're down there taking a look at the links available for uh, following along with this video, of course, there will be uh, uh, links to Patreon and coffee, things like that. If you want to support the channel that way, or if you want to, uh, I did enable channel memberships recently, so you can take a look at that. Uh, if that fits uh, your needs, your lifestyle, what you want to do, and maybe how you want to help support the channel, those are all available options. I also want to give a big shout out to my patrons. Uh, I just mentioned Patreon and for Patreon, I forgot. Thank you to my patron uh, members. Thank you to my uh, to my my channel members. Thank you all. I do really appreciate you guys for helping support me uh, for the past several months since I've had these things available. Uh, I really do appreciate it. So. With all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support, and I'll talk to you in the next video.